when everybody stops believing in government and authority, can humanity truly be free? Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows use or modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network on theseasofliberty.com and theconsciousresistance.com. Peace Vinicism is covered by the BIPCOT NoGov license. This allows for reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at bipcot.org. And she's got the BIPCOT flag back there, so beautiful. <laughs> she knows how it goes. Uh, so today we have Cheryl Yurkowski, who's coming in from southern Ontario, Canada. She's a volunteerist model, peaceful parent of a five-year-old girl and the founder of Anarcho Babe, which just passed um, was it, oh, 12,000 likes. So she's, uh, she's cruising. She's, she's <laughs> on a roll. Um, and you can find her on Facebook, Steam It, and Instagram um, under the uh, username Anarcho Babe and on Twitter, Cheryl Yurkowski. And so we're going to talk a little bit about her path to, anarchism, uh, to volunteerism and anarchy, how she became a volunteerist. And also um, a recent incident, well, not so recent, a few months ago, uh, in in her house um, of what happened when, a, when an agent of the state um, just decided to go inside for <laughs> for reasons that we'll find out. And and also she's been quite popular with the um, with the owners of Facebook as uh, <laughs> she, they put on multiple <laughs> Facebook bans and put in Facebook jail and. Had to create, <laughs> had to create multiple accounts, and she keeps responding like a, like a video game, uh, uh, <laughs> character. <laughs> they can't keep you down. So, no. um, yeah, so awesome. Uh, so Cheryl, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. No problem. Uh, I uh, I saw you. Um, let's see, Larkin Rose um, interviewed you, and and you said the anti media also, right? Interviewed. Yeah about this this incident and um and i think it's it's you know a very you know an, another i don't well i guess it's not really related to cps right this is just this is just law enforcement um but um but yeah it just it just shows the um you know the the coercion that is the relationship that we have with the state you know it's not about you know asking permission it's it's not about um gentleness or kindness but um yeah just people who believe that they are above the regular you know codes of morality that we're all subject to and uh for some reason we got to uh comply right regardless of if they're in their right mind or not so uh so yeah before we get into that um so please go into your that your history of um how you uh came to all this stuff weird ideas of uh voluntary <laughs> interaction <laughs> Yeah. Um, long story short, um, it all started because I was raised in a Christian background. I know it started. That's how I started down the rabbit hole was actually through Christianity. Hmm. Um, I became a parent in 2011. So I was just trying to find out how to be a decent human uh, in this world and try to be a good person. So that's where I started with what I was raised with and what I knew. And I became really interested in the book of Revelations and the end times. So I ended up getting into like conspiracies with religion. And that's what set me down the rabbit hole. And then I started learning about ancient religions and how everything is very, very similar and everything's the same. And I stumbled across Mark Passio. And Mark Passio is also an anarchist. Um, and through Mark Passio's channel, um, I found Larkin Rose and with those two, um, teachers, I was able to go, ah, okay. Everything I thought that was wrong, that was wrong with me is actually everything that is right with me. (laughs) 
(laughs) And so I found their work and I read uh, a lot of Larkin Rose's books and I've listened to almost all of his, um, uh, his recordings on connect pal. And he just really made it easy to understand what anarchism is, uh, voluntarism, non-aggression, uh, principle and self-ownership. So between him and Mark Passio and all their work, that's how I ended up where I am today. Awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. With me, it was Stefan Molyneux and, and, uh, you know, I started with, um, peaceful parenting and learning about, um, you know, corporal punishment and spanking, what that does to children. And then that Mm -hmm. brought me into voluntarism, but also Larkin Rose in his book, the most dangerous superstition. Uh, you know, you know, the first time I heard about you was I saw a video of you reading a a passage from, uh, Larkin Rose's book, the most dangerous superstition. Um, (laughs) yeah, yeah. Was that, was that like, like the, like when you were just discovering him or you knew about him for a while? That's when I like just really started to get into a lot of his work. Um, and I'm like, I really need to start telling people about this man and how simple he's made everything in this book. So that's what I did. I just started reading his book and um, it just really solidified everything. It's, I mean, if you know Larkin Rose and you've read his book, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just yeah. so black and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That book, uh, yeah, really um, clarified the idea of uh, you know belief in authority, and you know he talked a lot about um, the Milgram experiments, you know, yeah. and, and, right, and and how how telling that is, and and how people will stubbornly um, do things even if they think they're morally wrong, but if they believe that there's an authority figure telling them, and that somehow that um, you know, shirks responsibility from that action onto the authority figure that they, 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 maybe that's okay, you know, that they can't mm-hmm. claim personal responsibility. And it's amazing that people can do that and commit really horrific actions uh, up until killing people if they yeah. think somebody else is responsible, you know? <laughs> oh, my actions didn't cause that. I was just doing my job, I was just following orders, right? I'm not morally responsible for that. That's one of the things that Mark Passio actually teaches very good is um, who's more morally culpable, the order giver, the order follower. Like mm-hmm. they're both morally culpable, but the order follower ultimately is one who manifests the evil into reality. Exactly, exactly. I mean, there's the whole idea of um, diffusion of responsibility, you know, in the chain of command. It's like, it's like you know, you have the, the president who issues the order and all the all the generals and uh, and exactly. and, and, and and commanders all the way down to the soldier that actually does it. And so who's responsible? I would say everyone's responsible, but yeah, you're right. More responsibility lies with the, with the order follower because he changes that from words into reality causes mm-hmm. immediate suffering. And, uh, and so, yeah, definitely the idea that, you know, that there exists sociopaths that are attracted to positions of power should not be a surprising thing. <laughs> <You know? laughs> you really, like, you know? really, it makes sense, right? Oh, big time. I mean, I, I mean, it's, and it's just so funny how people have this idea of the benevolent, um, compassionate, kind-hearted public servant. You know, I right. go into this office of, of power to serve people. <laughs> I'm using your money for <laughs> you. I'm serving. I'm not. I'm not ruling over you. I'm representing you. <laughs> Yeah. It's just amazing how um, people tend to think that how, you know, it's like, you know, the argument that like people are are evil, right? And need to be controlled. But then again, the kind of people that want to (laughs) control other people are the people who are are attracted to positions of power. So, so, yeah. It's just, it's this circle. And it's just like, it's this circle of insanity. And it's just like, what? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Larkin Rose definitely <coughs> has a very um very simple, clear, efficient way to explain these things. And I think that's what I've been striving to do in my writing, my videos that I make and the way I explain these things. I try to explain things in in a way that it's almost self-evident and obvious, you know? Um, yeah. Like, like one thing I wanted to ask you also is how do you talk to people or do you talk to people uh, uh, like that you meet all the time, you know, you go to the store, you go to the post office, you go to the bank, you go to different places that you go and you meet people. Do you get into conversations about this or like, let's say, let, let's say with your, with your child, you're at a playground. Like, do you get into conversations like this? 
all the time. There's there's countless examples of anarchy all around you just by how humans interact. And I simply point them out to people, especially in situations where you know they can't deny it. And then it makes them go, oh, I never looked at it like that. And then later on and throughout the day, that person will start thinking about like, ah, oh, it's that little seed that sticks in there. And I'm a very outgoing person, especially in public. Um, I'm always very chatty with everyone. And oh. I always, always try to spread volunteerism and uh, try to change people's trained beliefs on anarchism because everyone believes anarchy is chaos and it's not so 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 give me a, an example of a, of a recent conversation you've had and, and how you approach it like it's, i just want to i just want to understand like your the, the way you start a conversation like this or how do you lead to that conclusion it's usually something funny and charming that i'll start off with is usually <laughs> what it is like there is this one okay perfect example i'm in getting a screen cover put on my phone and uh, there's this young gentleman in there and he's talking about uh, he was going to go through like business economics or whatever for school. And I'm just sitting there like listening. And then he goes on. But, you know, I've been thinking about getting into trades and whatnot because the way things are going with government and the student loans and they keep taking money from me and yada, 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 yada. And I just turn. <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, taxation is theft, right? He turns <laughs> and he's like yeah, that kind of makes sense. I'm like, yeah, it is. And I'm like, also, it'd be smart for you. And I'm like, I don't mean to be eavesdropping, but it would be smart for you to get into trades and go through the market that way. Because when the government and the economy collapses, which it will inevitably, it's going to, you will always have work through the free market and free trades that you know. And what do you say? He just looked at me and he's like, that's a really good point. I'm going to keep that in mind. And of course, he like he's younger than me. And this was after I had my interview with my lawyer. So I'm like dressed to the nines ah, and like my 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 okay. dress, my heels, my fancy nylons and everything. <laughs> right. And then I just go off on this spiel. And then there's nice. the guy who's doing the work on on the phones or whatever. He's just like listening to what I'm saying. And I can see the wheels turning in their head. They're slowly starting to think about the things that I'm saying. Mm. You know, that's and really... I just yeah. Go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and when I, and when I approach them, I, I'm usually really giggly and charming um, to warm them up to the idea, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, using... The idea behind Anarcho Babe. <laughs> Yeah, using <laughs> rope them in with yeah. your charm and sweetness. <laughs> exactly, using humor. I mean, I mean that's a great point. You know, when you're talking about um, your appearance, like dressing nice. Like I think for me as well, I um I I always try to dress you know pretty respectable and and um and I think and and also the fact that you know I, I uh, I'm with my kids and you know I talk about homeschooling and I um. And I talk about you know why we do that and the unschooling, and so and, and so they see that I'm like a decent person that I have morals, you know. Mm -hmm. And then and then finally, uh, you know, maybe the topic for me eventually uh, somehow I forget. I mean, I mean, how does it happen? It, it just I don't know. It, it just it, happens. It, it reminds me of that meme where you see the penguin and it's like it's like I'm <laughs> go, going going to a, a a party and like ends up talking about the apocalypse or the yes, <laughs> government yes, is evil. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they said I wouldn't get political three drinks later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but 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 that's the thing. I don't consider it political though. I just get like what, yeah. what I talk about is um, you know people say I don't know what's your political stance. I'm like no, I'm not I don't have a political stance. I have an apolitical stance. No. I know I, we we talk about you know human action, economics, morality, agorism, homeschooling, unschooling. You know these are not political stances. And you know all, all we're looking for the way I look at it is you know, logical consistency, right? Principles. Yes. And once you logical figure out, consistency. Once you figure out those principles, you know, you don't need anything else. You know, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter what other people do. It doesn't matter what their gender, race, nationality, um, a religion. It doesn't matter what any of that is, right? Because we're all just human beings. And if it's murder here, it doesn't matter if you travel an ocean away, it's still murder. <laughs> murder. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Oh yes. <laughs> Um, let me give you an example. For me, recently, um, I was at this uh, this place where my my kids were taking these classes. Um, they're like like uh, really fun, like classes geared towards homeschoolers about math and science. My kids love it absolutely; <laughs> they love it so much. And I was talking to this one woman who's also a new homeschooler, and she was, she was 
asking me questions about it. And I was telling her why we homeschool and everything. And then I told her, I think uh, somehow I mentioned my website, my YouTube channel. She's like, oh, what's it about? Uh, actually, she said, what's it called? And so at that point, I don't really like to tell people what the name is because once they hear the word anarchy, like they get a certain thing in their mind. So, so I back into it. I back into it, right? I'm like, well, actually, I talk a lot about morality, economics, and something called volunteerism. And and I said, you know, we just advocate for voluntary interactions between peaceful people, right? Do you support that? Of course, you, of course you do. <laughs> you know, and then and then I asked her a name. What are the different voluntary um, uh, relationships in your life? And she's like, ah, uh, my husband. Yeah, your husband. Um, your friends, the type of the type of businesses you patronize, you know, these are all voluntary interactions. Now, what's an example of an involuntary interaction? And she was thinking, mm-hmm. and she said, um, school. And I said, you're right. Government school is an involuntary interaction. Now, now pan that out a little bit. The essence of it is the state, right? It's a state-run institution, right? So the state is the entity of coercion and uh, and uh, threat of violence in our life. So if you if you advocate for voluntary interaction, it automatically negates the state. You have to be an anarchist. <laughs> and then yes. she's like, she's like, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. See, it's little things like this, and you do so much better at me than explaining it. <laughs> um, but that's exactly how it happens: is you right. just ask them these little questions where they can't really, they can't disagree with you. Right. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, and and I think it definitely helps, you know, to look nice, to speak nice, to speak with mm-hmm. authority, or not, let's say, speak with confidence, right, and just assert yourself, okay. and just just show that you're a knowledgeable and decent and moral person, and, mm-hmm. and they're going to respect you just based on that. And and I think, um, and yeah, and then you, when you say you're an anarchist, they're like, huh, that's interesting. This this decent, respectable person <laughs> is also an anarchist. Isn't how, it? How can that make they're sense? not like sitting here throwing Molotov cocktails <laughs> at Little Caesars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like like all these protests that are going on, you know, Black Lives Matter, you know, <laughs> oh my rioting, goodness. and you know, destroying uh, destroying what do you call it uh, stores and breaking windows, stealing merchandise. That's what you get when you have statism. That's not right. anarchy. That's statism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's so unfortunate. Uh, so please, uh, please get into your uh, the incident, the the famous incident or the infamous incident oh, that, that happened God. that um, that really started or changed your life. Long story short, the law enforcement of Lindsay, Ontario, were called to a disturbance at my house, and uh, I was downstairs in my bed sleeping, and the police had entered my home without a warrant, uh, and two different statements now. Uh, one of the warrant or one of the statements says that the police entered the home because the door was ajar, which gave them probable cause to enter the home which it what? doesn't That's so yes weird. yes and oh then the other the other story in the one statement was that they saw jesse and jesse asked them to stay outside um but they didn't listen so they came in anyway which again no warrant mm. so regardless they entered my home without a warrant and they came downstairs to see where i was because they were called to a disturbance with a male and a female so they want to check on the supposed victim or whatever to make sure they're okay. So that would have been me. I was downstairs sleeping in my bed, in my sheet, just in my underwear and mm. topless. Mm. That's how I sleep in my home. Mm-hmm. And I come out of my room to my daughter crying and I walk directly into a police officer and I had told the police officer Um, that they need to get out of my house. There's no warrant. I'm fine. I was sleeping. I want to go to bed and I want to be left alone. The police officer, Sergeant Jeanette Drew, she continued to escalate the situation instead of de-escalating it. And I had called 911 at this point because she was not listening to me. And this is all in my disclosure now that I have it, this whole 911 call. And you can hear me say, get out of my place, get out of my place. And then you hear me say, ow, don't touch me. And then they cut the call. Um, And that's when the female officer slammed me into the door in front of my daughter. And I turned out the lights and I ran up the stairs to get away from the police officer who's trying to arrest me at this point um, because she was just being extremely hostile with me. And so I was defending myself and in protection mode of my child. Um, so that's why everything went south with her, tried to get away from her. Um, she ended up yanking me over the couch and popping my arm out. And, 
Um, she held me down and put her knee in my back and I told her to let go of me three times. She wouldn't let go of me. So I bit her as I was trained in self-defense. Um, if you have nothing, Mm -hmm. uh, left to protect yourself with Mm -hmm. bite them Mm -hmm. and sure enough she let go of me and it wasn't a significant bite mark at all I saw the pictures in the disclosure it's not a bad bite mark at all and then that's when she called uh, Mark Donaldson over to me and he's the male officer who flipped me on my back and straddled me topless and two hand choked me and choked me until I went limp and I was gasping for air and I couldn't like I went out of in and out of consciousness and everything. And this all happened in front of my four year old daughter. And this is all recorded on that 911 call I made. And you can hear the police cut the call hmm. in certain parts where you can hear the police provoking me, showing that they were, in fact, the ones who aggressed against me. If the police had just left when I told them to leave and get out of my house because they had no warrant everything would have been fine. But this is what happens when you deal with these people. They think that they are the law and they can do whatever they want. And they just decide to beat me up and I'm supposed to be the victim. They really served and protected me. <laughs> and then they they threw me in jail for five days um, because prior to this happening, all on video camera, I was assaulted by a security guard at a local restaurant Um, because someone had thrown a drink and I got blamed for throwing the drink and it wasn't me. So the police came to my house and arrested me with a warrant. So naturally, I know that they have a warrant. There's not much I can do. So I went with them and they took me down to the station. I didn't give a statement, never, never give a statement because everything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. And I ended up beating that charge which was assault causing bodily harm because the security guard held me down like I was taught in self-defense this all happened a month before this police incident Hmm. and it's it is connected and I'll tell you how it's connected in a minute but I did the exact same thing with the security guard I bit her to make her let me go and that's exactly what happened I had a concussion and I had to spend the night in the hospital because they smashed my head off the exit door when it wasn't even me and this is all on camera who threw the drink So that charge got dropped against me on Thursday, March 24th, that Thursday. I was put on conditions for no alcohol, no intoxicating substances, and keep the peace of good behavior, and I was given a promise to appear for that. That all got thrown out in court because clearly in the evidence through through the videotape from the restaurant, I was in fact the victim, so I was going, I'm going to counter sue them, and they knew that. Now, here's the thing. I just beat that that Thursday on the 24th of March. The 26th of March, two days after, this is when the police came into my home and provoked me. On the dispatch calls, Jeanette Drew knew who I was. They did a synopsis of who I was and my history. Hmm. And it said, uh, the on the dispatch, the one lady said, uh, it's Cheryl Yurkowski, she's in there. She has conditions of no alcohol or intoxicating substance and keeps the pe- keep the peace of good behavior then all of a sudden someone else comes on the dispatch and says no those charges were withdrawn on thursday i personally was in court when cheryl had those charges withdrawn and she was the victim she's innocent so jeanette knew this okay she knew this she put me in jail for five days saying i breached my conditions for having alcohol in my system which i wasn't drunk And she says that I had alcohol in my system and put me in a maximum like security jail (laughs) for five days without seeing my kid, Mm -hmm. threatening me that the CAS took my kid. I had no Mm -hmm. idea where Sophia was for five days. And this is all because she didn't like that I stood up to her and they knew to come into my house to provoke me. They knew to deal with me that way. Um, to be able to power trip and use their authority to do what they do, act like gang members. And that's exactly what happened. And it's all coming out in my disclosure because they keep trying to cover it up and they keep screwing up with the evidence and it's all coming out. And it's good that it's all coming out because in the end, the truth, you know, the truth will set me free. And I've stuck by the truth the whole time. And the fact is, is that these thugs entered my home without a warrant and beat the living shit out of me and almost killed me in front of my four-year-old daughter and they want me to take uh the threat charge which was when i said i'm going to kick you in the face to the police officer after she's already been beating me up for five minutes because it's all on that 911 call right Mm -hmm. so they're trying to make a deal with me and threaten me saying you'll 
you won't face jail time if you take the one threat charge. We'll drop the assault charge, which will put you in jail for a long time on the police officer. Um, so they're trying to bargain with me, which is a fear tactic. And it's no, I'm totally innocent of everything against me because these police entered my house without a warrant. And if they had just waited outside like they were supposed to and didn't actually violate their code, um, this never would have happened. Can, can you also mention um, after they you know, beat you up and then the, the mail officer brought you to the car? And that what happened in the car? Like he, he was speaking to yeah. you? Yeah. Or... Once they got me in the car, uh, it was just me and the mail officer who had choked me out. And, oh, my battery's getting low. I'm going to have to plug it in. Um, but he was the one who choked me. And he came up to me and said that he will person like, he came into the car and he put his fist, like, right in my face. And he said, I'll personally make sure you never see your effing kid again how hmm. dare you make me do that and at that point I just I started crying and bawling my eyes out because this guy just strangled me there's a shotgun in this front of this vehicle I don't know if he's gonna like kill me or not I have no idea what's going on um yeah and they did try to do exactly just that the police officer uh Mark Ryan Donaldson he fabricated a report an abusive report saying I filled it out that Jesse was abusive to me to try and make it so that way uh, I couldn't get uh, I couldn't get Sophia back and same with Jesse uh, they tried to make it so that way we wouldn't get Sophia from the uh, CAS which is similar to the CPS in the states mm. uh, the CAS just closed their file with me and it's been uh, since March that's how long it's taken me to get them out of my life CIS, right? Uh, Children's Aid Society, oh, CAS. Aid, yeah. CAS, sorry. So, so, there, so that's closed with the CAS then? Finally, yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow, wow. Yeah, this... Um, you, you know, when I first heard about it from the Larkin Rose interview, I, uh, I was telling a few of my um, homeschooling friends about it. And, um, you know, I don't talk too much about <laughs> anarchy, you know, because they're, they're well, not anarchists, of course, or volunteers. <laughs> but... Uh, um, I do, you know, we do talk a little bit about this stuff and, um, uh, and I think they were very critical and what was kind of sad, I realized was that, um, a lot of people do the victim blaming thing, right? Yeah. They're like, you know, she must have done something to, to deserve that. You know, it's like, yeah. we don't, we don't have all the details. Don't jump to conclusions. You know, you make, you make the police out to be, you know, like they're just evil people. They just want to beat other people up, you know. Um, but you don't know all the facts, you know. So so why are you, you know. And, and it's it's so sad because um, it's like you have a person who's uh, an individual, no special superhuman rights. <laughs> then, you have, <laughs> then you have another person who's an agent of the state with sovereign immunity and protection from, uh, you know, the effects of their actions, who's in an obvious um, you know, um, role of power over the individual, and mm -hmm. when there's a problem, you blame the individual. <laughs> you know, like like it's the, crazy. It, it you know, it should be more often the 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 other way. I mean, it's yeah. like you know, it's like the, the power is so skewed. You know, it's 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 really it's really sad how so many people fall onto that mentality of and i guess it's a form of stockholm syndrome you know like these, uh, these people must be our protectors they must be there to keep us safe and that person must have done something to to make him like that you know and uh and it's it's so sad you really are um hmm, you're you're rationalizing your slave master basically <laughs> yeah exactly you're it, it makes no sense to me. It really doesn't. And, you know, I saw a lot of the posts and I read a lot of the comments on like anti-media when they shared my story. Mm -hmm. And I was even surprised that a lot of people um, and their comments that they put on there with the victim blaming towards me mm -hmm. and whatnot. And I just said, well, that's OK, because when the disclosure comes out, you're going to see that there was definitely a conspiracy plotted against me. Mm -hmm. 
And sure enough, it's all coming out in the wash with the evidence in my disclosure that they have been fabricating stuff against me. They did work with my ex to throw me under the bus. I watched an hour and 45 minute long statement that my ex gave to me. He said it was, they said on tape it was voluntary, but you can tell the whole thing was coerced um, just by the way that they were asking the questions. And I had opened an internal uh, review through the OIRPD um, in Ontario. They're the ones who conduct internal reviews for police departments when citizens, citizen slaves make complaints. And um, they ultimately found themselves not guilty after they got Jesse's statement, mm. which was the detective who was doing my internal investigation for the police brutality was the same inspector who conducted Jesse's statement. Mm. So I found that pretty funny and um, just all the tampering with the evidence and whatnot. So, I mean, everyone can sit there and say, well, she must have done something. She must have done something. Yeah, I did do something. And that something is I pissed off the state uh, with all the information that I spread and uh, try to wake people up to how government and authority is the most dangerous superstition that has ever existed. Do, do you think a, a large part of this has to do with that? With your activism and what you post? I definitely think that there's a lot of harassment involved with it because in that statement that my ex gave, they were asking questions uh, uh, about that. And mm. Jesse gave them a USB disc full mm. of my information. Like really? that's what this was all on the recording. Wow. He's like, yeah, I have I have information about her stuff that she shares, the anti-police, anti-government. She's very hostile towards police. Oh, my God. So that was really, really difficult because of all people, I thought that that person should have known better. I told, I said, these people will come to you at your lowest mm. when they've destroyed your life to get a statement out of you. Never give a statement to the police ever. Right. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's so really, this that's is, really this is this is how the government gets people to turn against you people that you think would never do that mm. they will through fear and that's what the thing that's the thing is through fear you can make a lot of people do a lot of weird things that you wouldn't think that they would do um not me though i still haven't given a statement i haven't buckled i won't buckle to these guys no not a chance in hell i'm fighting this all the way to the end these people were immoral and the world's gonna know about it right Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's this. Um, yeah. I think it's. Yeah. It's. A, it's. It's a lesson in. You know. You know. Compare. You know. The police to a private security agency, and and you know, can any private security agency or just think of like a mall cop or a bouncer do something like this and be and be free from reproach or um, you know punishment and. Uh, and they can't ever. <laughs> well, I find that exactly funny because the situation that led to me going to jail for five days was because an agent of a private security company did in fact assault me and tried to charge me with assault causing bodily harm when she full on attacks me and she violated all of the codes of her job. D did you have, was there a video of that? I have a video of it. Yeah, I okay. have it on my Facebook. And, and what happened to her? What happened to her? I'm currently in a lawsuit for that. Um, but the courthouse that I have to file it through is all through Lindsay. And they all know me there. And they're giving me runarounds. And they keep not accepting anything that I try to go and push through that courthouse. Because they all know who I am. <laughs> you're, just like a, you're just like a thorn in people's side, apparently. <laughs> right, this the Cheryl. <laughs> I love it. Man. I love it. I mean, uh, you just don't back down, which is awesome. I, mean, no, I think... Um, no. You know, people people who have the the courage to stand by to their stand by their convictions and their principles. You know, because you're firm and you understand um, that you didn't do anything wrong. You know that 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 you are innocent. And uh, you know these people, the law enforcement agents of the state. You know, I don't always like to say like you know the government attacked you. These are agents, people yeah, acting yeah. under people acting under this banner called government. These are agents of the state. The that shadow believe, hand that believe that they are superhuman and they can just, you know, burst into people's homes and beat up people for no particular reason mm -hmm. or just because they felt 
uh, threatened by a person. You know, that we should beat him up just for his own safety. Like my all, yeah, yeah. We're here to protect and serve you. Uh, bang, bang, bang. Um, oh my, God. my own uncle, my own uncle said to me this. Like this is hard. Uh, my own uncle said to me when I got out of jail and all this went down. We were talking. He was looking at me as if like I was a liar, and I could sense that. But whatever. And hmm. uh, he. He says to me, well, Cheryl, um, you need to grow up sometime. You can't just always fight back against these people. He's like, if they if they're called to a noise at 11 o'clock because that's the law and there's a disturbance and there's noise noise laws, they have every right to come into your home and do whatever they did to you. And I'm like, whoa. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's sad. Even when family. (laughs) Yeah, and I was just like, ouch. I'm like, that kind of hurt. And I'm like, that's totally not right. And I'm like, whatever. And he got mad and he left. He actually left after he said that because I turned to him. I said, I just got out of jail and I really don't need your added smugness right now because I just I was just too worked up to even try to explain anything. And with the state of mind he was in and how right. he said it, I'm just like, I'm not going to It'd be like talking to a brick wall. Right, right, right. So so what about your other family members? Um, uh, what do they uh, have you talked to them? Like, what do they think about your activism? Um, they've actually warmed up to it a lot because remember how I said I come from a Christian background, right? Right. I've been slowly teaching them like now I'm not a Christian by any means. I'm not religious by any means or at all Mm -hmm. uh, anymore. Um, But there is a really good argument that Larkin Rose has posted. Can you be a Christian and be an anarchist? And the answer technically is, yeah, you can, because if you look at the teachings of Christianity, it says Thou shall have no other gods before me and governments of God. So you can actually create a lot of contradictions um, that way and create a lot of good points and arguments with Christians. And that's what I've been doing with my family. And they're kind of like, oh, yeah, I see what it is. And they, they're getting it now. So they're starting to warm up to the idea. And now that all of this evidence is coming out in the wash, they're like, oh, maybe there was a conspiracy against you. Maybe there was something there. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, there is. <laughs> so that's uh, that's how I've been kind of warming them up to it, is trying to take them, I don't know how to say it. I know that they're never going to change from being Christians and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So I have to try and make it make sense to them through their beliefs or whatever, I guess. I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to explain it. It's difficult, though. It's difficult. Um, But, you know, my mom and my dad are fully supportive of it, and they get it. Now, they're they're not religious by any means either, but they believe in God and, like, the Bible and stuff like that. Um, so I just try and, you know, point out those little contradictions there and <laughs> make my point of anarchism and voluntarism to them um, and show them that it's about peaceful interactions and us wanting to dissolve uh, the violent uh, threats that we face. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, when I first started out this uh, podcast and YouTube channel, um I uh, didn't understand the idea of being a Christian anarchist, you know. Um, mm-hmm. see, it seemed like a contradiction to me, you know. It's like no no rulers, but God is your rulers. I didn't really get it. And then and then finally, you know, <coughs> I interviewed a lot of um, Christian anarchists for this channel. Eric July, Caleb Bader, um, you know, a couple of different people. And oh, yeah, what's the, um, the guy from Liberty Hangout? Um, Justin, uh, Mo- J- Justin Muldell, Justin. and James Chalene, and probably James, too. yeah, right. yeah. And so, and so, it's um, yeah, it is interesting. And 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 now I've I've come to the conclusion. And also, you know, I used to say I'm more anarcho capitalist, but now I just mm-hmm. say anarchist because because I don't even think that we need to specify all that much, you know, because I like the idea yeah. of volunteerism. Just you know, all, all, all we need, to, you know, you know, just dispel this idea of statism. You know, no. Um, you know, there's no such thing as a legitimate government or a legitimate ruler. And then after mm-hmm. that, after we get to that place, live how you want. 
<laughs> you yeah, know, exactly. as long as you're not hurting anybody, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't right? matter what religion you believe. Yeah, exactly. And like, that's the thing. That's where I can understand it. Because I just actually had a recent debate with a friend over this world. They're like, well, no, you can't be an anarchist and be a Christian because God, like you just said, like God's authority, blah, right. blah, blah, right, things right. like that. Um, but I can understand it from their point of view and how they see it because they don't see it more of like a like an authority figure, I guess. That's how my parents have explained it. Uh, Cause that's what I've said. I've said that exactly to them. And my parents are like, well, no, we don't really look at it. Like is like a authority figure and whatnot. I'm like, okay, that's your cup of tea. This is how I view it. And right. whatever. <laughs> right. You know, when I'm talking to people, I figure out, you know, are you a decent human being with morals, you know, a morality mm. and a conscience and a moral compass. And if you are, it doesn't really matter what you believe. You know, you can, uh, you know, Muslim mm-hmm. or Christian or Jewish or whatever. It doesn't matter because maybe some people need this idea of God to be good mm-hmm. and they mm-hmm. need that. And that's fine because and then somebody else says, no, that's that's horrible. That's ridiculous. I'm just I'm an atheist and I, I'll be good or I'm a volunteer. So I'm just good because I understand universal laws of morality. Good. So mm-hmm. both have the same outcome. So it doesn't yeah. matter how people got there. Right. Right. And like, that's, that's how it started for me is like, I'm like, well, how do I be decent person? So I went to what I knew with what was decent and like, what would Jesus do and all these good teachings. Right. (laughs) And don't get me wrong. There are some really good teachings in that book. Uh, but then there, but then when I was getting into like anarchism, like God creates man to force it to love himself. And if they don't love him, he's going to throw them in a lake of fire. I'm like, I don't think I like this God. (laughs) So so I've just found the balance between the two. I've found the balance between the two. And I think that's ultimately like what life is about is being able to find the balance between the two. Like, I mean, (laughs) it's like that video I share all the time by Kyle sees like you are what you love, not what loves you. That video I share all the time. It doesn't matter whether you're a Christian, you're atheist or whatever doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Um, because we waste so much time fighting over that rather than seeing the actual point and seeing who the real enemy is, which is a bunch of men and women in suits who think that they can bully us through this idea called government right right actually you just remind me of a of a meme you know you see jesus uh you know somebody's like uh i guess sick or or dying on the floor and jesus is like you know holding their head and 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 embracing them and then it says hold on just stay right here i'm gonna go over here and pass a law to forcefully redistribute wealth (laughs) 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 to to then give you health (laughs) care That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. Yeah, it's like it's like all these memes. What would Jesus do? You know, like <laughs> I love the "What would Jesus do?" memes, or like the Yahweh ones. Yahweh. Well, I haven't like seen. I haven't seen those. Are, oh, the Yahweh ones are funny. I haven't seen those. Okay. <laughs> I'll have to send you some dank memes. Definitely. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so so Christian anarchists, cool people, you know, and it's like it's like you know. It's a very simple philosophy, and and the more people understand it and uh, embrace it and uh, and you know promote it, I think um, the, mm-hmm. the quicker that we will see an end to wars and bailouts and redistribution mm-hmm. and you know all these laws and regulations and taxes, because you know you know once people figure out you know the, the other thing I like to say is um, I never say that I want to abolish the government, right? Because fundamentally. What is the government? It's just men and women with guns forcing you to pay them, right? As Mark Stevens mm-hmm. would say. So, so how could you abolish that? It's nothing to abolish, right? It's just realizing, no. as Mark and Rose would say, it's realizing that like the Tooth Fairy, like Santa Claus and, uh, the, and the Easter Bunny, it's just a belief system, right? Statism yeah. is a mentality. And so it's not like, you know, if you, if you remove Santa Claus, are the people going to wonder, well, wh- if we don't have Santa Claus, how are we going to get gifts to the kids? <laughs> no. I don't know, guys. <laughs> how? Oh. So it doesn't Jeez. exist in the first place. It's just people who think they have an, um, you know, an exemption to the laws of morality that we're all subject to. That's it. Very simple. You know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and- like, point to government and show me government. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you can't really, it's not really a th- thing like you know what i mean it's uh it's an idea and the idea has to be destroyed in the minds where it was created it's exactly like lord of the rings the mm. ring has to be destroyed where it was created the ring is the belief mm. the power 
that's what it represents and you have to destroy it in your mind. And once everybody reaches that, like, oh, this is totally like illegitimate. Like I don't, I don't have to follow this. And if everybody did that, there's not a damn thing that these people could do. You have a handful of people versus a sea full of people and there's literally nothing they could do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're parasites. So the parasite is always, um, you know, dwarfed by the host. Right. Um, so, mm -hmm. so yeah, you're right. Once we get enough numbers, it's just, it's a numbers game and, and the, the house of cards falls apart. Um, but but yeah so so yeah this idea this idea of statism it's um it, it's really this it, it's really an illusory mentality that that once you realize it it's it's um it doesn't make sense anymore it's illogical it can't make sense right belief in authority um is is uh, fundamentally flawed right and so just look at a kid look at a kid and how kids interact on a on a schoolyard that's no kid wants to be ruled or have authority over them it's natural to be an anarchist it's just natural and actually talking about uh, talking about kids in schoolyards um you know people would say i can imagine people to that argument say well what about bullies See, in schoolyards oh, there's always, this is there's my always favorite the topic <laughs> okay go ahead <laughs> oh this is a great topic because um, I've noticed quite a few um, stir ups in a lot of the anarchist groups and communities because of the NAP, the non aggression principle. And there's right, right. lots of gray areas and whatnot. Um, the thing about the bullying situation so you have a schoolyard, you have bully Mike, and then this Mike kid bullies all the other kids, and none of the other kids are strong enough or quite tough enough to put this Mike jerk in his place. So there's this one kid, Billy. And Mike doesn't pick on Billy and leaves Billy alone. So technically, Mike hasn't hasn't aggressed against Billy. So he's not violating Billy's. Uh, he's not violating the non-aggression principle there. However, he's violating it all over the place with the other kids. So Billy sees this going on, and Billy decides to go over and punch out Mike, the bully. Mm. Technically, Mike did violate the non-aggression principle towards Mike. <laughs> however, Mike deserved it. Uh -huh. Right. Uh -huh. So I find that that's a pretty good example of when people say, oh, well, there's these gray areas, yada, yada. And I'm like, well, sometimes when the bully gets hit, kind of looks good on them and I can understand it. So that's one of my favorite topics about schoolyards and bullies and how it all works. <laughs> OK, so I just thought of two things when you said that the first thing was the way I would respond to that is um, the idea of government school is uh an, it, you know people think you know you got to send your kid to school for the socialization right no mm -hmm. forced no. association is not socialization right so we see bullies and gangs in school and where else mm -hmm. do you see them in prison right and another area another environment of forced association right so the formation yeah. of bullies and gangs and violence is natural in in um environments where people don't want to necessarily be together they're forced to be together <laughs> <laughs> that's entirely true how many kids tell you i don't want to be at school i hate it right right <coughs> excuse me i'm sick <laughs> yeah no it's okay uh, yeah okay so one argument that i i uh i hear from people is like all right so if all government is immoral does that mean that i have the right to beat up my postal worker the, my mailman what? Because he's a, because he's a government agent, right? And his salary is dependent oh, no. on theft. So does that mean I should beat up my my mailman? And and my answer <laughs> to that. <laughs> so my answer, or or you could say a teacher. Can you have a right to beat up a teacher, right? So the answer to that is, um, no, no, because <laughs> sure, these people are paid in stolen funds. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, there's a big difference between a mailman and a soldier, right? There's one person that's obviously violating human rights <laughs> and another person is just doing something that perhaps if left to the free market, there would still be a, a mail service. It wouldn't mm -hmm. be called maybe the U.S. Post Office, but it would be, there would be some, <laughs> some agency that would be delivering paper, right? So right? Someone's got to get their mail. It's, a legitimate, like, it's really a legitimate job. And same thing with teaching, right? There would always be teachers, not just in government school. You know, there's always teachers. So... Um, so yeah, so who will build the road? <laughs> so yeah, so that's the first thing, and then and then the second thing is I don't think teachers are evil, or you know trying to indoctrinate our kids and you know yeah. manipulating our kids. You know mm -mm. I, I don't think all law enforcement officers are evil either. No, nope. right? But what I do think is that the system that they're operating in is inflexible, is immoral, right? 
And, Mm -hmm. and that is why that is the foundation of it. So I'm not that that's why I don't support anybody, you know, um, bombing, you know, government buildings or shooting cops or killing anybody, because that's not the solution. You know, you're not dealing with the problem, which is a fundamental misunderstanding of morality, which is called statism. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's the yeah, problem. Exactly. That's the root of the problem, right? So, yeah, exactly. So sure, it might feel good to 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 punch the bully, but you mm-hmm. know, th- 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 this is where the analogy doesn't really go far enough because the idea of uh, of uh, of statism is um, why are these people in positions of power? Because we have created them. Because people think that they're necessary mm-hmm. for civilization. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Right. And so that's why I wanted to add that one point is because I knew like from your aspect and your point of views, you would bring out that side, um, which is more important than people who just sit there and focus on these gray areas, right? right. So I love our conversation that we're having because we're showing two different very um, aspects of that with my, with my analogy that I just gave and then what you just said. It shows the perfect... Um, you know, how you can fall into that trap of arguing over little things when, you know, yeah, sometimes it's good when you see the bully. Like, I can understand why there's this retaliation of people fighting back and all this stuff. But also at the same time, that doesn't get to the solution because the people that we need to be deprogramming are the people that are the ones that are doing those things, like the police and the people in government. You need to actually destroy the belief of government and authority in them so they realize oh shoot what i'm doing is totally immoral and they quit their jobs exactly i just I, when you say that i just thought of two really funny analogies for your or for your playground scenario the first one is um the black lives matter equivalent on the playground would be a group of kids just you know they, they see this bully terrorizing everyone so they're like all right let's go to that vending machine and destroy it and steal all the soda that's gonna solve the problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's a black life. Yes. Ma- that's a black life matter. Yes. And then the other one was, you know, if I was on the playground, you're on the playground, and we're both watching these this bully terrorizing everyone, you would be the one to punch the bully, and I would be the one talking to everybody, saying how his authority is illegitimate, and and he's using the appeal to <laughs> the appeal to force logical fallacy. <laughs> 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 I love it. So, so this is you. why I love having conversations <laughs> with other fellow voluntarists and other anarchists because it just it's so great. Yeah. So 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 you would punch him, and I would I would explain to the people <laughs> why why what you just did was not necessarily immoral. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's like there's these there's these little things there. There's these right. little things there where I'm trying to like I'm trying to wrap my head around it and balance it right because like i said earlier it's all about finding this balance between everything with like common sense principles and morality right definitely definitely so before we go um please get into your um your facebook um um i don't know how you say um (laughs) (laughs) escapades of being of being banned and jailed (laughs) oh god uh, for your most Mm. controversial uh memes yeah so um, I don't know if I'm going to be on Facebook for too much longer because the way things are going, they keep asking me to prove that I'm Cheryl Yurkowski on multiple accounts because I keep getting banned um, for making memes that are targeting people in government. Uh, like one in example was the meme I made targeting Sally Jewell, which wasn't her personal contact info. It was all public information I posted. Uh, her contact information uh, for the public because the Bureau of Land Management, not Black Lives Matter, was going, (laughs) yeah, I posted BLM and they're like, what is Black Lives Matter doing slaughtering (laughs) 45,000 horses? I'm like, no guys, it's the Bureau of Land Management. And so I shared this meme with her picture and this contact info and what they were up to about killing those 45,000 horses or whatever. And it reached 50,000 people, 700 organic reshares. And I guess it stirred up a lot of um, a lot of ruckus on the Internet and created a lot of phone calls and emails sent to this person. So they Mm. banned me for seven days (laughs) and took down the meme. Then I put it up. I put it up on a different page and they banned it from that page, too. So then they deleted that Facebook account. So I had to make another one. And uh, so now these memes are surfacing um, of Mark Zuckerberg. I keep 
uh, banning Cheryl Yurkowski, but she keeps responding. <laughs> <laughs> so they've threatened. They have threatened to take down Anarcho Bay permanently. <gasps> so no. I've been, yeah. So I've been having to really, uh, <laughs> really keep it safe right there for right now because I really don't want to lose that page. Just got it to 12k, almost 13k likes. So yeah. don't want to lose that page. And um, there's a couple other silly trolling memes that I've posted that have gotten me banned too. So yeah, there's one with the kid. Uh, I don't know this this kid with the plaid shirt and right and you, you, you I think it's your profile in one of your accounts. Oh yeah. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. One? Oh yeah, I got banned. Oh my gosh, my most recent ban. <laughs> oh my most recent ban. So my most recent ban was I post, I got off my ban. I got off my ban and I asked, so who got banned today on fascist book, everyone who's winning that caught me a 30 day ban in the Facebook jail. So then I made a meme of that one popular, like that kid with that face, that school kid, that meme. And it's a asks who got banned catches 30 day ban. (laughs) You're, uh, you're, uh, you're popular with the Facebook, um, you know, up, uh, you know, the higher ups in Facebook. <laughs> and then uh, my my one profile picture for my Cheryl Yurkowski that is currently banned is guess who just got out of Facebook jail? <laughs> <laughs> Goes right back in. Oh man, oh, man. And, and and one of your one of your uh, accounts has like five thousand uh, friends, right? The maximum is that? Yeah, the one that's in jail. Ah. Oh. Damn it. So how many? So how, all my reach is on that. Oh, uh, so how many accounts do you have now? Well, they deleted two, so I'm. I think I'm down to three Cheryl Yurkowskis, and I have a couple sock accounts. Ones uh, I have one that's my name spelled backwards, oh. and then I have another secret one. Oh, nice. Okay, no problem. <laughs> I have one secret one. One secret one. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, you know, I think I think you know. It's so important for us when we're on social media to network and connect with other people, you know, friend mm-hmm. each other and, you know, boost each other's posts and like and comment and share. Uh, and same thing with Steemit. You know, well, one thing that Steemit is so awesome about is there's no blocking, there's no censoring, you know, it's completely open source and, uh, and uh, you know, it's based on blockchain technology. Um, Yes. I mean, I don't know. Uh, have you gotten paid? Have you, or have you, have you just started with that? Or, or I just, I just created the account because for some reason on my, uh, I'm just, I just really have a self, my cell phones right now, mm. um, and for some reason on my iPhone 5s it wouldn't work. Like I would generate the password and then I would put that like that insanely long password in, mm. and it wouldn't take it for some reason on this phone. Then I just got my new phone a couple weeks ago. And I finally set it up through the web browser on this phone, and it worked perfectly fine with my password. So um, I'm going to get started on that soon. I've just been brushing up on my writing skills. It's been a little bit since I've um, <laughs> done some actual, you know, like formally written pieces and, right. you know, arguments and have you done essay any, style. Have you done any writing on, on anarchy before or volunteerism? Uh, just like little posts here and there on my Facebook that you would see from, yeah, just little posts here and there. Um, but it's something that I've been, uh, reading into and brushing up on my skills because I really want to get good at, um, getting the basic messages across to people because I have a way of getting people to listen to me. Uh, because of the way I look. And I, I don't mean that in a shallow way. I really don't. But I do do modeling. And that's my job. I understand the way I look. And we use beauty and we use sex to sell things um, that really aren't good ideas in the mainstream society. If you look at what most models are selling mm-hmm. and promoting, it's just pure garbage. So mm-hmm. I'm like, why couldn't I do that for voluntarism and for anarchy right why mm, not mm-hmm. do that for something that really is truly good mm. right so that's what i've been trying to do is make the two coalesce i guess nice. is what you could say yeah so i've been really working on a lot of self 
growth and self-development right now, especially with what has happened, the position that I've found myself in with the government destroying my life, it's is very hard to go through. Mm. And there are some days where it takes me three hours to convince myself to even have a shower because the situation that I'm in is just so difficult to live with. I, I'll never be able to go home. I still have none of my things from March. Uh, mm. My apartment that I lived in is sold. All of my possessions are with my ex and I'm not, I, I, I don't know if I'll ever get them back. Mm. And I've just been, my life has been totally stagnated because of what the government has done. So it's given me a lot of time to go within myself and um, really grow and what's the word? I'm looking for a specific word and I can't find it. Um, cause there is a word for this. Uh, but it's just the stages that I'm trying to complete of being the little caterpillar and turning into the butterfly. Meta- meta- metamorphosis. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's the word. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Actually that reminds me of, uh, of a, of another meme where you see a caterpillar changing into a butterfly and then <laughs> it says your friends be like, you changed. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. That's exactly what I've been been going through. And it's been te- it's taught me a lot, actually, um, to really get the message across of anarchy and voluntarism through peace and love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Awesome. Well, I don't want to keep you too long, um, but wonderful conversation. So before we go, um, please, uh, if you can plug your contact information, how, how people can reach you if they want to see what you're up to and which accounts have not been uh, banned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so my Facebook, I can be found on Facebook at Cheryl Yurkowski. Uh, my last name is pretty unique, so it's spelled Y-U-R-K-O-W-S-K-I. Um, so I'll likely pop up pretty quick. And you can find me under Anarcho Babe for my Facebook page, for my Instagram, and my Twitter is Cheryl Yurkowski. I'm also on a new app called Peaks, and I stream live on there for usually about an hour, one to two times a week, and I discuss uh, random topics that come to my mind, and uh, you can feel free to download that and add me. I'm under XWIS, X-W-I-I-S, which is an old Command & Conquer game server, if people (laughs) are wondering, because I always get asked what that's from. (laughs) Oh, Okay. So that's my other username. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, so I wanted to just uh, mention, because you, you were talking about, um, you know, using your modeling to spread the message of volunteerism. Um, and it made me think of, um, you know, Amanda Rockwitz, the dragon anarchist. Because mm-hmm. that's I love her. One, yeah, that's one thing that she she talks about is, you know, how attractive women should use their looks and their appearance to spread this message because... Um, if you get more attention because of that, then that just benefits us all, <laughs> really. Right? right? You can reach right? more people, and people, I, I guess especially men, <laughs> maybe some women, think that you're credible because of that, which, you Ooh. know, it's a great thing. I mean, it's it's just how the human brain is wired, you know? We all are sexual beings, and we respond to that uh accordingly yeah. so why not use that to our advantage because of course everybody uh or every business uses those kinds of right you know uses those kinds of means to portray or or uh, um you know yeah to spread their message so why mm-hmm. why, why don't we use our you know right like i, I know I, ca- I catch a lot of flack and i catch a lot of flack from females i find a lot of female really? anarchists seriously yes oh yes God. all that girl she's just they get all like yeah they get all snippety about it um and i'm just like whatever like it's not that's not your cup of tea like i I really don't care it works for me because on my posts so i'll post um a written thing that i write let's just say i post something that's anti-government or whatever Mm -hmm. anti-police uh and it's just in written words That'll maybe reach a thousand to two thousand people. Mm-hmm. If I do a Snapchat selfie with that same writing on it in that filter where it puts the writing on my selfie, that will reach ten thousand people. Nice. So don't tell me nice. it doesn't work. Nice. So when I have people coming down on me, I'm like, yeah, but you know, 
I am making a huge reach. I have people asking me, uh, what is operation paperclip? What is that? Mm -hmm. And that's because I took a, like a really sexy selfie (laughs) with that image on it. Right. Right, right, Or with that caption on the image and the people are Googling it. So it's just like when people sit there and try and come down on me for it, I'm like, well, what are you doing? How many people are you reaching? <laughs> you know, my question for those women would be, are you really a feminist or are you really an anarchist? That sounds something right, like, like what a feminist would say. <laughs> yeah, oh. I don't I don't get it. And then and then you get some guys on there that are just, oh, she's just an attention seeking. Uh-huh. Attention she's just attention seeking. And I'm like, well, that's the whole point of this post is to get your attention, to get you to Google this information. Like, come on. <laughs> I think I think we're all attention. Well, uh, I, mean, I don't like say all. Okay, me. Okay, <laughs> I'll just say me. <laughs> I have a page. Don't of, be a collectivist. Right, exactly. I have a Facebook page, or I, maybe I should say content creators. Content creators are attention seekers. We want subscribers. Yeah. We want <clears throat> likes. We want comments and shares. You know, that's how we expand our reach. Those little thumbs ups, like going you know, across the screen right now. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I. We want your likes. I. I, um, you know, when I talk to people um, in my everyday life, and I and I and I talk to them about my my Facebook page, if I'm really comfortable with them, I would say, um, please, if you have the, the spare time, just go on my page and just like everything. <laughs> you don't have to read it. I'm never <laughs> I'm never gonna test you. I'm never gonna question you. Did you actually? Do you understand what the broken window fallacy? Do you know what the law of diminishing marginal utility? No, I'm never gonna ask you that. Just like it, and I'll be a happy man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you comment and share, like and share. That, if you comment and share, that'd be even more awesome. But if you're not, yeah. if you're not out of time, just like, 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 I do that sometimes when I when I meet somebody, or uh, you know, like I'm talking to a new anarchist, and I'm like, you know, let me just go to their page and like everything. <laughs> and so, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, and that's the thing. People, a lot of people don't understand how networking uh, on social media works, and like that's the thing is it's all run by algorithms, and my algorithms get messed up all the time like I'll notice sometimes I'll get a lot lot of activity and then other times I don't get a lot a lot of activity so that's why I'm on there trying to share a lot from other people's pages and a lot of other people's um Facebooks is to generate that traffic back to all of my pages which then ultimately generates traffic back to all the other pages and it's a network that's how it's supposed to work yeah yeah so um so yeah, I just wanted to say that that um, yeah. you know using using modeling and using your appearance to sell this, it's it's just another way to spread the message. And I think it's just like somebody you know writing books, um, making rap songs, you know making uh, you know podcasting, YouTubing, writing poetry, writing articles. You know, just creativity or, is what or modeling. It is. You know, yeah. it's like it's just another way to reach people, right? Mm-hmm. And if somebody is not inclined to read, you know, a thick economic textbook, but they're more inclined to see a meme of you and a short little writing, that's 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 awesome because you're you're reaching somebody who would not have otherwise read that textbook, but because they saw your meme, now they're thinking about these concepts. Yeah, yeah. So many people have been like, oh, what's this book, The Most Dangerous Superstition? I'm like, oh, it's a must read. And then I get them really hyped about it. And they're like, oh, and then they come back and they say, you know, I really started reading this book and it's making a lot of sense. So, you know, it, it the anarchist model idea is working. And I try and use that is uh combat the social the mainstream media with a mainstream idea, which is do mainstream model things but with touches of anarchy to it or something and it's it's all flowing really nicely like as i said i'm a very go with the flow person and i just created that anarcho babe character and she's doing awesome (laughs) and yet the other thing i have to say that uh i think i noticed is that there's amongst the libertarian slash anarchist slash volunteerist community there's a lot of attractive women. <laughs> I just had there to say, I, think, I don't know what it is. I love it. You know? I love it. It's just awesome. And then, and then, you know, when you look at, I have to say, I have to say, unfortunately, feminists, when you look at feminists, I don't know what happened. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, it's like, it's like women who start complaining about their lot in life and they blame, mm-hmm. they blame other people for the problems rather than trying to empower others. And, and, you know, and that's, that's why like what I do, I really try to focus on, you know, what, 
what we can do, right? Um, what people should be doing, right? Um, you know, so we're not only um, anti-state, anti-war, you know, anti-taxation and all that, but we're also pro-peace, pro-love, pro-family, right? And pro-voluntary interactions. And I think it's mm-hmm. important. It's important to state that because. Um, uh, I think uh, some people get too caught up. They're like, "Well, I know you hate the city. You know, you hate the police. You hate." The There's government. a lot of negativity right. there, right? And you gotta, you gotta kind of lighten it up with those positive things. And that's what I'm also learning too is um, how to uh, be more loving and caring with the approach on it because there is so much. Oh, you're so anti-police. You're so anti-government. So anti this, and it, mm. it, there is a lot of negativity around it, right? Mm. I find, and it can turn people off to it. So. You know, I've been trying to flip it on the more loving approach and loving side because I am a very Mm -hmm. um, outgoing, fiery type of person. So it's easier for me to stay in that area of, oh, you know, fuck the government, all Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Right. 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 right, right. Whereas that turns a lot of people off. So I'm like that with my anarchists and my friends that I know who understand that. So when I'm approaching your people, I'm more reserved and laid back and understanding to what they're trying to say because ultimately you're going to want to get a point across to a status and you're not going to get it across to them by saying ah fuck the police and stuff like that it's not going to work exactly exactly yeah. you, you try more you check more flies with honey than with vinegar right <laughs> it's true it's true and i'm slowly learning how to blend it all together with the anarcho babes so it's it's working and and the future is looking good. Good. I, I hope you don't get banned. I have my fingers crossed. So, um. <laughs> uh, well, if I end up banned, I'll just be back. I'll uh. always come back. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. They can't. They can't seem to keep us down. You know, they just we just keep responding. I love that. It's awesome. <laughs> it's great. It's exactly like you know. It's like Call of Duty when they right. <laughs> they shoot you. You just respond. Oh, hey guys, I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. back in the game. <laughs> I, yeah. just, I just fell off a cliff, but I'm back. All right. Back us. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's awesome. And you're absolutely right when it when it comes down to the anarchist community. we got a lot of good looking females and it's awesome. We need all of the anarcho babes. I know. <laughs> So you, maybe there will be an anarcho babe too. Hopefully, hopefully you start a revolution of that. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that's another thing too. If there are any anarchist females that want to hop on my page and also be an admin, I'm more than willing to do that. Like you know, um, for them to start doing the the same things, or if they even want to go their own creative way with it, just contact me. And yeah, I think it's it's a great idea. Do you for have a any, lot of any, women. any admins now? Uh, it's just me and Johnny right now, okay. Johnny, Johnny Liberty. Yeah, cool. just him and I. And he he's helped me with my anarcho babe a lot. So I really appreciate his help. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I definitely recommend having admins on. Uh, definitely. I, I've I've uh, yeah, I've had a, a couple of people help me with my page. I mean, I mean, I don't post nearly as much as, as often as you do. Probably I'm very slow. Like I like to write, you know, I like to, you know, I enjoy videos. your posts. So they're very good. Thank you. <laughs> I put, you the know. the time that you take, uh, it shows. It shows the time that you put into your work, which I definitely appreciate because writing stuff out is difficult and all the editing that goes into it. And you're like, hmm, how do I write this out? Exactly, exactly. And you know, mm-hmm. you want to be careful what you say. People are going to pick it apart, and of course. <laughs> oh, people are going to. Oh, people all <laughs> people pick everything apart. You like that's the thing. Just when you think that you're like, oh, okay, I'm an anarchist and I've found this anarchist community. And then, like I said, once I'm an anarcho-capitalist and everyone freaked out. I'm like, what? Like, oh, does nobody <laughs> understand the etymology behind capitalism and what right. capitalism actually is right, or right, right. what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The labeling, right? Exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, so I post very infrequently, you know, like once every other day if i'm lucky once every three days that's why it's so nice to have admins to post stuff you know Mm -hmm. i just i just i'm not the type of person to just throw up a meme i just don't do that you know that's not my style i i like to put more work into it so you know because i've always been a writer and you know i have my videos and i do short videos too so um but yeah yeah please everyone you know contact her and uh, help her out with her page you know Hopefully, Anarcho Babe can grow and uh, reach more people with the yeah. se- with the sexy memes. We need more of that kind of stuff. I, I <laughs> the dang sexies. <laughs> you need you need to make volunteerism sexy. I think that's your I think that's your mission in life is to make volunteerism sexy. And uh, yeah. you know, 
That's an awesome mission. <laughs> it is. It is. And another thing too is you can also find me on Snapchat. My Snapchat is xwis x w i i s. It's absolutely hilarious. Um, I have quite a few people that actually uh, look forward to my snaps on there because I do a bunch of uh, with the filters on there. I do a bunch of different like little alter egos and <laughs> teach about volunteerism through these little animal beings on Snapchat. And it can be extremely funny <laughs> and uh, also cute at the same time. So definitely feel free to check me out on Snapchat. Awesome. Yes, please do. So, um, oh, yeah. So one thing I'd like to ask my guests before we go is what is your favorite quote of all time? My favorite quote of all time. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Probably I prefer dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery. Nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that reminds, that reminds me of a meme. Uh, this guy, Jim Limber Davis. I don't know if you, you heard of him. He wrote these books, uh, Liberty Defined and Morality Defined. Yeah. And, yeah, so he made a meme about that. Um, I think it's where you see a guy, like a guy in, like, a, you know, an old medieval knight, right? He's like, mm -hmm. j he jumps off a cliff with a sword. And he's like, and then you see the huge dragon that he's that he's jumping towards, like fire breathing dragon. And it's like, <laughs> I prefer a peaceful, uh, dangerous freedom to a peaceful slavery. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love that. And probably the next quote below that would be one of Larkin Rose's, which is, um, "It should be stressed that authority is always in the eye of the beholder." Mm hmm. Yeah, I like that. That's another good quote that I like too. There's just too many. <laughs> There's too many. I know. I know. I'm sorry. I, I put you in a corner. I made you pick one. Um, but yeah, talking about talking about that real quick. I I, uh, I basically <laughs> I like to say to people that you you take the actions of an agent of the state and you have a regular individual do those very same actions. And if it's a crime, then you know what the state is doing is a crime <laughs> or is immoral. Yeah. It's very simple. Um, so, yeah, very good. Authority is always illegitimate, you know, the uh, the belief in authority, basically. I mean, I guess there's voluntary authority. You know, you, you, you look up to people because they're smart and intelligent and you want to follow them. But, you know, once people try to rule over you with force and edicts and mandates and laws, mm -hmm. it is no longer, no longer legitimate, lo no longer moral. So, um, yeah, wonderful conversation, Cheryl. Thank you very yeah. much for coming on. I uh, really appreciate it. So if anybody wants to help me out, you can do so through uh, Bitcoin, Patreon, or PayPal. Links are below. That's patreon.com slash peacefulanarchism to help me out. A uh, dollar show is all I ask. Uh, I love doing this. I do it for free uh, because I want to educate the world. And, um, and if you find value in my work, just um, you know, give me, throw me some uh, Federal Reserve notes or Bitcoin. And help me do more of it, like inter interview fascinating people like Cheryl here, uh, so we can hopefully get the world to see that volunteerism is not only logical, rational, but also sexy. We need that. We, we, we need more of this. <laughs> we need more of the sexy, and, uh, and and because we want we want to raise little peaceful anarchists and volunteerists too as well. So yes, that's very important. Is uh, educating the next generation. Um, yes, that's so. extremely important. Peaceful parenting is the way to go for sure. No, big time, big time. You know, it's it's it's, it's one uh, difficulty trying to convert somebody who's after decades and decades of of statism in their mind, trying to change them, but then to raise somebody peacefully and uh. you know not aggressively, not violently, and you know showing them what is morality, what is a conscience, and you know ha you know giving them principles to live by. Like, there's nothing you can't you can't get any better than that. <laughs> It feels so good to just nurture the natural freedom and creativity that's there in that little individual. Like that's what's so great about being an anarchist parent and a voluntarist parent and a peaceful parent is that you get to all those things I thought was wrong with me, all the problems I went through high school and as a teenager and how I was so rebellious, but I didn't understand why I was rebellious. Um, I can help my daughter not go through that by teaching her the things that I didn't know. And that's when I realized changing the world really starts with parenting. Right. Oh, yeah. Big time. It really does. Yeah, people underestimate the idea, the, the power of peaceful parenting. Um, because, you know, I, I, you know, people, when they ask me why I do the homeschooling or the unschooling or how should I do that, you know, a, a very simple way is um, you raise your kids the way that you want the future to be. The way that you want the world to be 
of the future, that's how you raise your kids. That's how you treat your kids because they will、mm-hmm. compose the world of tomorrow, right? They'll be exactly. The, they'll be the people, and so it's very important how we raise our kids. You know, it's like you're sending a message to the future. This is what I want the future to be like. You know, do you want be the them- change you want to see? Yeah. Do you want them? Do you want to teach them that might makes right and that you know authority is always correct, or do you want them to teach them, you know, what is a, what is morality, what is a conscience, you know, independent, free thinker, things like that?、Um, so yeah, vitally important P- parenting. One of the most one of the most underrated、uh, mm-hmm. jobs there is. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so、yep. awesome. I can talk to you for hours, Cheryl. God me too. You know, you know, <laughs> me it's, too. It's, it's too much fun. So、uh, <laughs> we're gonna give our listeners a break, cut it off. But thanks a lot. I really appreciate、yeah. it.、Um, so, so yeah, everyone, please check out her her Facebook page, Anarcho Babe,、uh, and help make the world more sexy through volunteerism. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it too. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. No problem. No problem. So this is、uh, Peace Finalism on the Voluntary Virtues Network. And theconsciousresistance dot com and theseedsofliberty dot com, wishing all of you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more of it, please feel free to donate and help me interview other fascinating people. You can do so through Patreon. That's Patreon dot com slash peacefulanarchism to help me out. A dollar a show is all I ask. If you feel so inclined to donate more, please feel free. It will only assist me in spreading the message of freedom and volunteerism that much farther and that much more efficiently. You can also donate to my Bitcoin. My Bitcoin address is in the description to my videos, as well as on my website, peacefulanarchism dot com. And while you're on my site, there's a donate button to donate through PayPal. If you prefer to donate through PayPal, you can do so with that. But Patreon is a little bit easier for content creators, as you can set up a recurring donation if you so desire. Also, while you're on my website, peacefulanarchism.com, please feel free to sign up, enter your email address, sign up for my newsletter, and you will receive updates every time I post something—a video or an interview. I do not send out any spam. Or you can also follow me on Facebook. Under facebook.com/peacefulanarchism or facebook.com/danilo cuellar three, I believe danilo cuellar three. So either either one of those methods, if you are able to donate, I would be most appreciative. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you have a magnificent day. Cell four one one is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government controlled nine one one. Cell four one one allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell four one one is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so called services aren't needed. Cell four one one has had thousands of installs, and of course, it's covered by the Bitcot no government license. Cell four one one because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell Four One One. Get it today at getcell411.com. That's getcell411.com.